It can be scorchingly hot in summer. It can actually be really cold in winter. It's just a, a magical place for photographers. The Mallee is a huge region that takes up most of that triangle that is northwest Victoria. And the way it's best defined is the place where Mallee trees grow. It's a sort of an outback type place. It can be scorchingly hot, 48 degrees in summer. It can actually be really cold in winter, but it's that really Australian sort of colours. Muted colours, hot, dry, tough country. G'day, I'm Adam McNichol. I'm an author and a publisher, and I've just published a new book called The Mallee, A Journey Through Northwest Victoria. It gave me an excuse to come home and spend a lot of time right here, back in the Mallee where I grew up. We have five photographers involved, five really acclaimed documentary photographers. And when you put it all together, I think it makes a really compelling story. My name's Noel Butcher and I'm a photographer and I've been taking pictures for most of the last 50 years. The colour palette and the broad expanse of sky and land and the colour of the wheat changes depending on the season you're here. And big skies in the Mallee are just a wonderful thing to have in a landscape. It's just a, a magical place for photographers. I think what's fascinating about the story of the Mallee from uh, a European or a white perspective is that people went there thinking that they could basically over a you know generation turn a very arid native Australian environment into a very European style agricultural area. And that was very, very difficult because it's so dry. So Mallee people tend to be pretty tough. They tend to be pretty resilient and they tend to have actually very much adapted to the harsh nature of the Mallee environment that they've tried to tame. This is a special place, the Mallee, for me because my dad was actually born in Sea Lake just as the depression started. My grandfather was a farmer, but he lost the farm and Life then went downhill because they went from rental properties to living in a tent on um, land of a local farmer who would let them do that. And then they built a, uh, a sleeper and hessian bag humpy made out of flower bags. And Dad had a really tough upbringing. And he would mention all these wonderful towns like Patchewalik and Witchy Proof and Buckra Banyul. Here, I'm at Cocamba a little town halfway between Menangatang and Chinkapook, classic Mallee names. When you look across the flat Mallee landscapes, one thing that you see popping up is you see the silos. They're the skyscrapers of the bush, if you like, and the Mallee is dotted with all these silos. This country, the Mallee, was settled to be a wheat growing area and grain growing is still so important to the local economy and, and to the local culture. So the way all the Mallee country was opened up to farming and to, to European settlement was by building railway lines through the area. It was just the lifeline that uh, joined a lot of these towns. I used to work here on the grain silos, emptying grain trucks on 43 degree days with grumpy farmers who'd waited in a queue for two hours. But it was great fun and it was a great upbringing. What's interesting about photographing silos and, and writing about the Mallee's history is that in many places, a, a railway line, some sleepers and these grain silos are all that's left of some of the once bustling 
little towns. And it's very hard to imagine, but it, it really does, I suppose, tug at the heartstrings when you think of all the human endeavor that went into building all these communities, and some of them lasted barely two decades. You come across some of these wonderful old sheds that have been abandoned for a long time, but the combination of greyed out timber and rusty corrugated iron, sometimes a little more than a pile in a field, uh, is just you know, magic for a photographer who has a silly habit of photographing old sheds. G'day Adam. Welcome to the home of the Chinkapook Footy Club, the Mighty Magpies. This is, well this was once an absolute hive of activity mate, but um, she's seen better days. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like in need of a good glazier. It's a leftover that tells us all about the, uh, the things that once went on in the Mallee that uh, now a lot of these buildings just sit idle. But once yeah. upon a time, this was the home of a very, very successful football club. But it's not just a story of decline and depopulation. A really important thing to do when you look at the Mallee today is to celebrate the amazing stories of revival and regeneration. The Silo Art Trail has unquestionably been a boon for tourism in the Mallee. It's bringing so many people. The Lake Tyrrell story is an amazing tourism success story. It was lovely to come back and just wander around the town and see how it had, is actually coming to life again with tourism at Lake Tyrrell and the, the pub being put together by the locals. It's just, it's just really nice. One of its legacies will be the capturing of the histories of the small towns. But I think another one is the capturing this snapshot of a moment in time. So now we know that in 2020, here's what was left of the grand schemes to populate the Mallee. And here are the hints at revival of the silo art, of the tourism, of the immense prosperity led by technology out on the farm. So I think in 50 years, someone could look at this book and they'll have a reference point for here's what the Mallee was like in 2020. And here's what it was like in the context of a history that stretches back more than 120 years. It's just a, a really great place to photograph. Mm -hmm.